Hey guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about protein distribution. Now this is something really near and dear to my heart. Part of my PhD thesis research was on protein distribution. In fact, we theorized that if you had a skewed distribution of protein, meaning you didn't get enough protein kind of spaced throughout the day and you just kind of over consumed at one or two meals, that that would not be as good as getting it kind of equally distributed. The reason being is that the body really has no storage mechanism for protein. There is a minimum threshold to stimulate anabolism in muscle for muscle protein synthesis. And there is also a maximal cap, which means that low protein or inadequate protein at one meal to stimulate anabolism theoretically should not be able to be made up, made up at another meal by over consuming protein. Because for example, if you have three meals per day at 30 grams of protein, let's say that's theoretically uh, better than having one meal at 10, one meal at 20, and another meal at 60. Reason being is that we think, you know, 30-ish grams can kind of max out the protein synthetic response, but it's very individual. And thus, if you have 60, which is probably over the threshold, depending on the source you're using, once you're over that threshold, once you're over that maximum threshold, you're not getting double the protein synthetic response as you are with 30. So theoretically, you should not be able to make up for low or inadequate protein at one meal by over consuming it at another. But it never been really been tested. Well, we did an experiment where we took rats and for 11 weeks, we fed them evenly distributed protein intake or a protein intake where the rats got 15% of their daily protein at breakfast, 15% at lunch, and 70% at dinner. At the end of 11 weeks, we found that the rats that got uh, evenly distributed protein had bigger muscles than the rats who didn't. Now, it wasn't a huge difference. It was only about like eight to 10% difference in muscle weights and it's in rats. So it's a limitation, but it was a very tightly controlled study with a high subject number. A recent study out of Japan looked at a very similar study in humans and they also had them resistance trained. So they had these guys resistance trained for 12 weeks and one group either got a low protein breakfast, a moderate protein lunch and a really high protein dinner, or they got it spread pretty evenly. In the spread group, uh, they were getting 20 grams ish of protein at breakfast, 30 ish at lunch, and then a little bit over 30 at dinner. In the unevenly distributed group, they were getting less than 10 grams at breakfast, uh, around 30 grams at lunch, over 50 grams at dinner. So as you can tell, quite the skewed distribution. They had them follow this diet for 12 weeks. They also had them do uh, dietary recalls using their phones to take pictures of what they ate throughout the day to improve compliance. And the compliance in this study was actually quite high, which is great. After 12 weeks, they looked at their lean mass as well as some measures of strength. Now, the strength really wasn't different between groups. There was a trend for the evenly distributed protein group to have better leg extension strength but it didn't reach significance. It was a p-value of 0.09, which we call a trend. Now, what's interesting is their lean mass was significantly greater in the group that had the evenly distributed protein. So that seems to lend support to this idea that protein metabolism is not regulated on a daily basis, but rather on a meal to meal basis. So what are the takeaways from this? Well, the takeaways are what I've been saying for probably uh, 15 years now, which is if you're gonna have protein, Try to distribute it over three to five meals throughout the day and get at least 30 to 50 grams of high quality protein at each meal. Now I know who is gonna come after this study and that's gonna be the people who really like intermittent fasting because based on these data, it looks like intermittent fasting probably isn't the most optimal thing for building muscle. Now we know that you can lose the same amount of fat on intermittent fasting as you can on any other type of diet. So it, 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 if you prefer it, that's fine. And it's not like it was huge differences in muscle mass, it wasn't, but there was a difference. So if you're somebody who just wants to build muscle and you're never planning on competing in bodybuilding or anything like that, then intermittent fasting is fine. You can build muscle, um, you can get leaner, and if you like eating that way, it's fine. But if you're somebody who wants to build the most muscle possible, it doesn't look like intermittent fasting is your best approach for that particular goal. One limitation to this study, the total protein intake throughout the day was only like 85 grams. So for many of us, that will sound pretty low. It may be that protein distribution matters more 
when you're on that lower end of protein intake. Uh, in fact, it probably does matter more. So if you get somebody who's consuming say 200 or 250 grams, does distribution matter as much? We don't know because that hasn't been measured. All we can do is draw uh, kind of tenuous conclusions. But what I would say is, again, if you're just looking to put on some muscle, burn some fat, and you like intermittent fasting, it's totally fine. If you want to absolutely maximize your muscle building and squeeze every ounce out of your genetics that you can for building muscle, intermittent fasting is probably not optimal. All right, guys, if you like the study, check it out. The links are in the description, as well as a link to the study that I published on the same topic.